This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Later that week, Paul takes Sarah's advice and sees his primary care physician. They told me that what I had was cellulitis. Cellulitis is a common skin infection often caused by the streptococcus bacteria. If not treated properly, it can rapidly spread and cause serious tissue damage. I figured, okay, fine, finally got the determination, right? It's gonna go away and life's gonna return to normal. For several days, Paul takes the antibiotic and his eye appears to be improving. But then one afternoon, while getting out of his delivery truck, Paul checks himself in the rear view mirror and is horrified by what he sees. His eye is worse than ever. It had covered all the way across my entire eyelid. It was very large. I could feel pussy on the inside. There was some kind of a discharge that was coming out. I'd never seen anything that looked like that before. Despite his eye's grotesque appearance, Paul decides to finish his deliveries. I'm very serious about getting work done, getting things done, and taking care of business. And I don't want my customers to think that there's something contagious with me. So I decided I was going to wear sunglasses. With his eye hidden behind dark lenses, Paul makes it through the workday, then heads to the emergency room. Paul is eventually diagnosed with a far more severe case of cellulitis than initially thought, and given a powerful dose of IV antibiotics. It was very scary because you're in the hospital and you have all these tests done on you, you're hooked up to IVs. Paul spends that night in the hospital. And by the next morning, his eye appears much improved. I'm thinking, okay, they're on the right course of action, the swelling's going down. With his eye seemingly on the mend, Paul is discharged from the hospital. I was feeling really excited that, okay, we finally have licked this thing. It's, it's going to get better. For five days, he regularly applies a warm compress to his eye, hoping it will speed the healing process. But gradually, his symptoms return. I started noticing that it was swelling a little bit more. It felt like there was some kind of a, a mass or something right up in the corner of my eye. Then, at the end of the week, Paul's in his kitchen when things come to a head. All of a sudden, I just started getting this severe shooting pain right through the corner of my eye. I felt like something was moving around in there. I'd never felt pain like that before. There was a lot of discharge coming out of my eye. You could see, and some blood was in it, too. And now I'm just, what is going on now? Am I going to go blind? I was very concerned that I'm not going to be able to perform my job anymore. This could affect, you know, my entire future. Once again, Paul goes in for a checkup. This time, he sees eye specialist Dr. David Berger. When I first looked at the area of inflammation, I was concerned that this was very unusual and we needed to investigate a little bit more. Dr. Berger uses a special microscope to closely examine Paul's eye. Puts me in the little machine where you put your chin in there. And as he's looking, he goes, hmm. There was a little tiny hole in the center portion of the largest area of swelling. I was uh, prodding it a little bit with a Q-tip to see what kind of discharge or, or blood would come out. I actually saw some movement in the hole in the eyelid. Dr. Berger said, Sarah, come here. I want you to take a look at this. So now I'm thinking, why does he want her to see it first? 
so I go and I look. And it was like two little black dots that kept going in and out, in and out of his eyelid. I didn't want to freak out because I didn't want to freak Paul out. So, you know, I like backed up from the chair and Paul's like, what, what? Now I'm freaked out. I continued to look under the microscope and all of a sudden a small gelatinous figure filled the hole. I was uh, all of a sudden thinking to myself, I think there may be something alive in this eyelid. Dr. Berger said, I don't know what it is, but it's living. At this point, I think I went numb. I was just stunned that there's a creature inside of me. I was concerned that this could potentially jeopardize his vision, so we needed to get it out right away. Dr. Berger rushes Paul into surgery. But once inside the operating room, Paul decides he only wants a local anesthetic. Didn't mind being awake for her, because I really wanted to know what it was. Once Paul is fully prepped, Dr. Berger begins the operation. I used a scalpel blade to open the area. At this point, I could feel something in there moved. Something was coming out of my eye. As soon as the scalpel made the incision, out popped a worm that was approximately one and a half inches long. It was round and it was gelatinous and it had several tentacles coming out of the head. The worm was moving, it was still alive. Now, I'm concerned about what's really going on. You start getting you know, these thoughts in your head of what really is this, you know? After a consultation uh, with a biologist, we determined Paul had a warble fly larva in his eyelid. Warble flies are a family of winged insects found in the United States and known for inserting their larvae into the flesh of mammals. Inside Paul's eyelid, the warble fly maggot burrows into his skin and grows in size, causing extreme swelling and stabbing pains. One of the most fascinating things about warble fly larvae is that they can affect more than just the skin. Some are able to survive deep inside the body for nearly a year while they find the perfect place to nest and grow. It's even possible for the larvae to end up in the brain where they can damage cerebral tissue, causing paralysis and even death. But how did the larvae get into Paul's eyelid in the first place? Different types of warble fly infest their host differently. Some plant their eggs in an open wound. Others leave eggs on bushes where they can be transferred to a host as it brushes past. The eggs then hatch into larvae, which enter the body through a hair follicle or make their way into the mouth or nose. And Paul thinks he knows how he became an unwitting host. I came to the determination I had some kind of a food product on my hand and I had scratched my eye somehow. And this warble just grew out of that. 